All right, welcome back to the channel and to another season of Hickory Hacker Course Vlogs. We're going to kick the 2023 season off here in Winter Park, Florida at the Winter Park 9. This is the site of the Winter Park Hickory Classic every January, and it's one of the most popular Hickory events on the calendar at one of the top-rated nine-hole courses in the country. They've been playing golf here since 1914, but in 2016, the course underwent an extensive renovation, helping make it one of the top-rated courses in the country. And as I mentioned, the Winter Park Hickory Classic is a popular event. There's a waiting list for this event each year, so if you want to play in it, you got to jump on it early. So here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stuart and Jacoby. There's my brand new Stuart and Jacoby bag I'll tell you about in a bit. I'm using my Pre-35 Authentic Hickory Irons for this round, and a title is True Field Ball. And here's the scorecard for the nine holes at Winter Park 9. Short course, but the greens are very difficult here, hard to hold in a lot of instances, which you'll see over the course of the round. First hole's a par four, 241 yards, easy going start. But before we do that, here's event organizer Bill Geisler with the introductions of my playing partners. Best doggone bag maker in Hickory Golf, and for that matter, anywhere in the United States, Mr. Will Jacoby. So one of the first things you notice when you play Winter Park 9 for the first time is the constant presence of traffic on the roads that pretty much line every hole. The course is set right in the middle of a neighborhood and you cross the road several times over the course of the round. Uh, you know, for some people it's unnerving to see cars constantly on your, in your peripheral, but uh, it didn't bother me really and I, I zoned them out pretty quick. Also, the fairways here are very generous, so uh, I never really worried about hitting it into the street. Very nice. What did worry me were the approaches into these greens. Most of them are elevated and oh, very undulating. Excellent. Yeah, you could take multiple approaches into them as you just saw there. Great shot from Scott nice using kind of a modern technique of uh, just flying the ball into the green as opposed to the mashy run up that I used. But the end result was a birdie. That is a great start for me if you've ever watched my course vlogs. A good start for everybody, actually. It's so moving on to number two, par three, 146 yards. Some strategic bunker placement here. I found this was an 18 hole round. I'm only going to show you the front nine and then some highlights from the back nine. But you play the loop twice from different tees That's a good spot. to get your 18 hole score. And there you see two under net to start. You don't see red numbers on my graphics too often. And there's another solid strike Good. using the mashie. Nice shot. Thank you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And for your information, the scoring that I show in the graphics is the net score ra rather than the gross. Uh, mostly because the gross numbers for me get pretty high as a high handicapper. And um, net score is usually what I'm uh, competing for in a tournament anyway. So I only keep score f on the graphics for the tournament rounds on the channel. And... Um, you know, I'm starting out here, birdie par. I wonder where that put me on the leaderboard to start. Um, trust me, it won't last, but a great start for me. Unheard of start, actually. And heading into the number three par five, uh, I needed that nice little boost of confidence. So as you see here, we've got roads on either side of us. And a little, again, you know, tentative off the tee, even though you've got a wide open fairway in front of you. Still, the presence of those roads makes the ball want to travel places you don't want it to go. Uh, Will got lucky here. I have a tendency to overswing in these circumstances because I see all that fairway and I want to really get it down there. And uh, overswings for me with the hickories means uh, usually a hook. And uh, here, 
Um, you know, I usually play it as it lies. That's just my, my whole philosophy about golf in general. However, uh, I could have uh, avoided this situation by dropping away from the tree because of a root rule that we had for this tournament that I forgot about. Uh, there could have been roots hidden under the pine straw there that could have broken the club. And uh, for that reason, you can take a free drop away from roots or away from trees. And uh, that would have certainly helped me there. So got a little bit of a, a hiccup here on this hole now. And I'm using the Tom Stewart J iron, which is a club that I'm still trying to get comfortable with off the fairway for longer approaches and uh, not going too well for me yet. So here I'm in the pine straw, I took the sweater off. I'm getting serious now. Just trying to punch it out, and that is a shot that I couldn't repeat in a thousand tries, probably, hitting that small tree there. So as you see, this hole's gotten away from me. Another thing that I had forgotten about was we were playing a net double bogey rule, which means if you're at net double bogey, you can pick up. And uh, this should have been my last shot of the hole. Net double bogey for me on this hole would have been an eight. You see Will using a Louisville Golf long putter. They don't make that putter anymore. I believe Mike just made that putter for Will. Oh, yeah. There's a nice end to a bad hole. All right, so we got back-to-back -back par fives here. Number four is 473 yards and the toughest hole according to the scorecard. Dog leg left, uh, but fairly straightforward hole. The, the difficulty here though is in the approach as in most of the holes here at Winter Park 9. You've got bunkers to avoid, an elevated green, and um, plenty of fairway, though, to start. You also want to stay away from the left side, which is a cemetery. So all of us are trying real hard to stay away from that left side. Well, we all got off the tee pretty well. So strategically here, if you're on the right side, it gives you a better angle into the dog leg. This is a little bit tougher here. I was short, so I had to go over that bunker. Using the Tom Stewart JR, and I didn't want to give up on it, and I'm glad I didn't, because this was one of my better shots of the round. There's just a, uh, a bunch of sounds you have to get used to when you play Winter Park 9 that you don't normally hear on a golf course. So you got traffic, and then you've also got the, the uh, train coming. Uh, also, there's, a, I believe, a fire station nearby, so you'll hear some sirens every once in a while. But again, you zone all that out. It's what's really cool about this course is you just kind of get into the round, and you still are able to um, you know, focus on your shots without worrying about all the noise. And that was a great out from the bunker using the McGregor flanged mashy niblick. It's kind of a new technique I'm working on this year to get out of longer bunkers or bunkers that aren't necessarily greenside. I'll still use the Hagen Iron Man for those greenside bunkers to just kind of blast it out. This is a very large green. So that's one of the saving graces on your approach into it is you know you've got a lot of green behind um, you know the, where usually the, where the pin may be. Though I guess there's probably instances where it's tucked in the corner too. All right, number five, par four, 354 yards, and we're going across the street once again. Pretty much every hole, I think, you, you end up crossing the street except for the three that are in this little section here. This is a tough hole because of that tree that's right next to the green, which you'll see in a moment. There you go. Again, pretty uh, generous fairway to aim at. All of us are, again, avoiding that left side. You have a better angle into the green if you stay on the left side, but you've got two fairway bunkers to navigate over there. So unless you can clear those and give yourself a short approach from the left side, you just want to stay in the middle. <laughs> to give yourself some of an angle over this tree that you're going to see in a moment. That was a little too far right, though, where this tee shot ended up. 
I was concerned that it actually trickled into the grove of trees there, but uh, in the distance there in front of the green is the tree that I'm talking about, and I'm using the mashie here, and the idea was I was trying to just fly over this tree, and I mostly did that, but it ended up getting knocked down by one branch just short of the green. Here's the tree in question behind Scott here, but again, you see another elevated green, and here's the putter. So this is really the play on most of these greens, in my opinion, is to putt when you can, because trying to chip up here just uh, can spell disaster for you if you scull it. You know, all of us, uh, we played a practice round the day before, but we're still getting used to what the greens are doing here. So here's my favorite hole in the course, number six, par four, 262 yards. Drivable for some folks, uh, but the green is just tucked in behind this grove of trees. So unless you can fly the trees uh, and avoid that bunker, your play is to the middle or to the left a little bit. And I didn't get anyone else's tee shot except for Will's, but I'm glad I did because it was one of the best of the day. He was very happy with that one. <laughs> but this probably makes for the most uh, entertaining approach into any green here at Winter Park 9. Nice shot there from Scott. And there's Will showing you how it's done. Nice runner. Up the right side. The green slopes severely back to front, so you want to try to get up on that right side and just roll it in. And that was a great shot from Will. This is, again, one of my favorite shots in hickory golf. When you've got all this wide space in front of you to do a mashy run up. And I wish I'd gotten a little bit more on that one, hit it a little fat. Need a little bit more. Thanks. And again, a very large green here. And this is all uphill. Yeah, Will was getting some tough breaks on the front nine, but you're going to see in the highlights from the back that he turned it on with the putter. And he was a pleasure to play with. It was our first round together. Uh, if you're a follower of the channel for a while, you know that Stuart and Jacoby is a, a longtime partner, actually the first partner of the channel. And it, like I said, it was a pleasure to play with Will. And we talked about the specs for the brand new golf bag I'm using this season that I took with, to me, with, took with me to Scotland. Um, and uh, it, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that more over the next several course vlogs as you get to see it on the course but um, I didn't actually have it in hand for this round I just talked about what I wanted uh, for a new golf bag with Will and um, he got it to me in time for Scotland they're off the tee on this par 3 hooked the, the shot again so that was another overswing for me and this green was my uh, nemesis all weekend one of the toughest greens to hold in general. You don't see a lot of rough there between the green and this bunker. So if you roll anything up toward where the pin was on this particular day, you're going in the bunker. And uh, then I sculled that Hagen Ironman out of the bunker. It's a pretty large green, but uh, whenever you're putting back up to this, this cup, you're really tentative about going back into that bunker. And I picked up there with a six. That was net double bogey. Back across the street for number eight, par three, 134 yards. Easiest hole on the scorecard. And again, another fun one. They're all fun, actually. But if you get a good shot on it, you, you have a lot more fun. <laughs> this was not what I was looking for. The Tom Morris Mashie that I'm using in this round, this is actually its final round in my bag because if you've watched the last few course vlogs from the end of the 2022 season, you saw me pushing that uh, club right consistently. I'm not sure why, but uh, it was something that was happening way more than it should have, and I finally took it out of my bag after this round, and you just saw that tee shot went right as well. So that was the last straw for me with the Tom Morris Mashie, and I'm now using a Tom Stewart Mashie. It would have been nice to save par with that putt. But uh, I'll settle for a bogey. 
And back across the street one more time for number nine, heading home with a par four, 228 yards. Another short one, but the fairway here is a bit tighter with trees on the left and a historic home on the right that's now a wedding venue. That's Casa Feliz, designed by architect James Gamble Rogers in 1932. It's open for tours, but uh, I wasn't really interested in taking one with this shot. So I lost that ball, had to take a drop outside of where I thought I lost it, and this shot's heading into the bunker. So not the way I wanted to wrap up the front nine. I mean, this is just kind of the uh, MO for me as a improving high handicapper. I have really good holes like I did with numbers one and two, and then I still get the blow up holes, which ruin the card. I'm ironing these out though. They're not as frequent as they used to be. And that's a tough eight to wrap up the front nine for me. Fortunately, Pat sends us off the front nine on a high note. That was an experience. <laughs> We're all warmed up now, though. So here's what I did on the front nine. 50 gross, 40 net. I improved on that in the back, which you'll see in a moment. But before we do, I want to show you what I'm wearing for this round, sponsored by Fiddler Golf. Today I was wearing the Fiddler Golf Zerigos, which is the shoes that I wear when there's a chance for rain. You saw it was pretty cloudy. You get details on those shoes and everything else in the description. And here's some highlights from the second loop. I mentioned that Will got hot with the putter, and this was the start of it on number 10. And then he had this one drop for him on number 12. Great putt. Inspired Pat to hit that putt on 12 as well. And then on 13, another one. I even got in on the action there. Scott had this fantastic tee shot on 16. Stay left. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Oh! What a fortuitous bounce! Did you get that on camera? I did. <laughs> Very nice. Pat was automatic on these short putts all day long. And then Will with the shot of the day on 17. <laughs> Great shot. That's the shot of the day right there, young man. So as I mentioned, I improved on my front nine with two strokes better on the back, 48 gross, 38 net. Had a blast at this event, and I highly recommend you check it out. Keep tabs on this and other Hickory events in your area by joining the Society of Hickory Golfers. Visit hickorygolfers.com for more information on how to do that. And I especially want to thank the Hacker Backers who are supporting this channel through Patreon and YouTube channel membership. If you'd like to add your name to this list and check out the exclusive content I'm providing members, which includes a narration-free Sounds of the Round video of this round and others, check out the description for information on how to become a Hacker Backer. Thanks again, folks, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this round. We'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here are a couple from the archive for you to check out. Thanks again. Take care. We'll see you next time.